is London. 60 minutes is all it took to bring humanity to the very brink of extinction. Mankind mobilized. A new age arose. The age of the great predator cities. Survival of the fastest. Nothing can stand in the face of this. We have to stop London before it destroys us. You've been a, a long-time friend and collaborator of Peter Jackson. Mm -hmm. You've, you've uh, directed scenes in, in some of the uh, Lord of the Rings or Hobbit movies. Hobbit whatnot. movies, yeah. But this is, in essence, your first full feature as, as director. Yeah. Yep. Um, so it's this massive world-building affair um, uh, under the auspice of Peter Jackson. So, like, no, no pressure at all, <laughs> obviously. Um, what is it about world building and creating a, a tangible world that is so appealing to you as a director? They're the kind of films that I grew up on, you know, right. like, you know, there, there was a period uh, of time when I was younger when most films you went to see were, were new and original. Right. Um, and that time sort of doesn't seem to be, that, that doesn't seem to be happening so much anymore. You know, it's the reason Pete bought the rights to the books is he just thought this is new characters, it's a new world. These would be great films, um, and then um, you know we reached a point that he he asked me to direct them, and I, I th I'd be an idiot to say no. Was it difficult to uh, adapt to a new realm, a new kind of story uh, world? Because you guys have been sort of the keeper of the Tolkien flame for mm. so long. Mm. Um, it no, it was refreshing. It was it was um, you know, and and, and, and it's it's really a lot of the philosophies that. Because at the end of the day, you know, when you're making a movie, you've got, you're making it, you, you're sort of having conversations. And, but, and, and you know, the, the, the Tolkien um, films were always about making the past uh, believable. Like, like you know, it's, it, even though it's, it's a fantastical story, Tolkien himself said it was, um, said it was um, supposed to be a prehistory 7,000 years ago. So we approached it as, as if we're telling a um, historical truth and tried to, tried to make it feel real. And this, is, this one is really just... The opposite, to some degree, we you know we, we're going forward um, three three thousand years, and so uh, again, it's an equal, it's a world that we've never experienced, never seen, and, and how do we make this as believable as we can? So, they, but um, you know, the, it's these the philosophies are still the same, and hey, it's um you know it's fun to have something with wheels moving around and in engines. <laughs> Did you think he was maybe a little high when he pitched the story? <laughs> like cities on wheels, it shouldn't work, and it's so out there, and yet. Uh, the way you've kind of put it together is it, it feels vital and alive. Like, how did you manage to make such an out there concept sing? Lots of hard work. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, you know, I'm not being glib in that. It, no. it, it, it was because when Pete, because Peter was originally going to direct them himself back right. in 2008. And I read the books um, on hearing about that. And I swore, you're never going to be able to do that. That's, mm. that's, that's, that's going to be impossible. Good luck with that. <laughs> and then when he asked no, me, I, I, I thought, well, God, if I say yes to this, this is going to be my, this is going to be my problem. <laughs> but I said yes. And then it became a process of design, like designing London and the cities to feel like viable settlements right. at that scale with the, you know, the requisite machinery to, to make them, to make them run. Um, I mean, given computer technology now, we could pre-vis a lot of stuff, pre-visualize, um, and, and build some quick models and do, you know, do motion tests and speed tests, and then, then go back and readjust the design. Some of the design process for London, we ended up with London with, with big wheels. Right. The, the wheelhouse of London being at the back, and it's sort of, oh, well, how would that turn? And so we thought about the logistics. Well, no, it would probably grow It'd probably be more um, upright at the front, more vertical, and then the, the, the city would trail back and, and, and sort of, you so know... You're trying to make a crazy idea as real world as possible, so you sort of take the idea yeah, and work back. Yeah, absolutely. And that's okay. just a design process. It's a process of, you know, doing animation tests and, and, and How, and how do you then it? balance characters and, and arcs and, and the smaller stories that really are the heart of the film? I mean, it was important to us that we actually made a character-driven story. I sure. mean, despite the, the the scale of the world and how much, how, how many visual effects we're going to have to use, everything had to be driven by the characters. This is a crazy movie. Yeah. Like this is conceptually a, a, a mad movie. How was this pitched to you, and what did you think when you first heard about this crazy movie? Wow, excited. Yeah, yeah. very excited. Yeah. Just the world, you know. It's a, right. it's a it's a world unlike any that I've read before, and. Um, such a wild concept. Oh, yeah. Cities on Yeah, wheels. this is what I'm yeah. talking about. Yeah. Like, I yeah. say crazy in the, in the best possible way, yeah. I understand. Yeah. It's just 
imaginative and kind of yeah. dreamlike and weird. Yeah. You were the daughter of uh, Hugo Weaving, who is um, clearly evil. Uh, does he radiate evil in real life? No. <laughs> Would you tell That's me if he did? Is he making you say that? <laughs> no, he's lovely. Oh, we we actually managed to get a chance to meet up before I flew to New Zealand to shoot, uh, to you know come up with some father daughter background and right. and all of that. So he was my first friend on set. Oh. Um, and so it was, no, he's lovely. He's such a sweetheart. Okay, I'm going to believe I, on the other hand, have a different experience. No, oh. <laughs> just kidding. That would have been a scoop. <laughs> well, you know, I'm playing his daughter, so it wasn't going to be mean. That is such a, a nice journey you have. I'm eating into slight spoilers, but, um, you know, your character's growing uh, horror at your father's real nature. It's, it actually works really well. It's quite a strong arc there. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's a really, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a, it's something that I was really drawn to when I read the book. Um, right. And was one of the reasons that I wanted to play Catherine so badly, was the father-daughter stuff. You know, I have to say that um, one of the most valuable things that I gained from this experience was the process that, that I took to, in my attempt to authentically embody a warrior. And right. so I kind of, I think I boosted my virtues a little bit because I made an effort to, to have more discipline, train my body into a strength. Um, because I'm, I'm a small frame person. Right. <laughs> I thought, who'd ever believe that I'm a warrior, you know? And so I really made an effort to, to learn sword training, to strength training. But also I picked up books about samurais and I really put myself out there to to really understand what it is to embody someone with such empowerment, and that empowered me in the end. So right on, it was wonderful. Did you have much interaction with Peter Jackson at all? Was that yeah, he was there, you know, hanging out on set throughout the whole thing. Just he was lovely. on. He was. Am I allowed to say this? He was. Um, <laughs> he was directing second unit. He shot all my action shots. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was on also on camera three. You he was so hands on. You don't get much more hands on than that, <laughs> yeah. right? Is, and is he, he changed lovely? the choreography last minute all the time. <laughs> it was it was really fun working. Fantastic. With him. Yeah. When you're actually in the film, when it's shooting, what are you looking at, like other than other actors? Like because there's so much special effects and CGI and and whatnot. Oh, what are you acting built against? So much. Oh yeah. They built hundreds such of, huge over a hundred sets. sets. Yeah. Wow. Very intricate, intricate sets. Huge ones as yeah. well. Not just little, you know little like towns huge, and villages. Huh. You know they built the inside of St Paul's Cathedral. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't remember the last time I was inside St Paul's Cathedral, but I'm going to say it might be like. Was size. it like one to one? Or? It was Maybe. a circular. It was a circular building where I shot my yeah my fighting scene. Right. -o. So know, it wasn't. I remember rooms, on like the Star alleys. Wars prequels, it was like the, everyone was against a green screen and a tennis yeah. ball and a stick. I have one shot like that. You had a tennis ball with the tennis stick. ball and the green screen. One thing like that, and every single other scene that I was in. Was was built every direction that you looked in was was you know a wall part of the set. It was okay. incredible. They built everything. I feel like you could feel that when you're watching yeah, it. There's yeah, a kind yeah. of lived-in quality yeah. to it. That well, a lot yeah, because the have. attention to detail of the you know the people that are like there throwing dirt on the floor in front of you. <laughs> you know, it's it's um, the detail is amazing. You've got the technology and you've got this crazy world and you've got the character-driven stories as well as all of that. You've also got a really interesting political and environmental subtext. Mm -hmm. and it's sort of about uh, mismanagement of resources mm -hmm. and, and that kind of stuff. Was it important for that to be such a strong theme? Because it really comes across very well. It is our world, you know, and, and human, humans do get into cyclic behavior and usually sure. those, those, those patterns of behavior are destructive. Um, and it's sort of saying that even in 3,000 years, we, we, there's a possibility that we might not have moved on. Yeah. Um, it'll be, it's, it's very different. But we, you know, attract, you know, the people who live on London and all the other tractionists, they think this is, this is just how they should live. At one point in right. time, they started moving on these big cities just to survive, but that time's passed now, and they could probably just shut down their engines and all right. get off and start growing the land, but they're in this cyclic pattern of behavior, which is, no, this is, this is how we stay alive. We hunt other towns and right. we, we eat them up and we and, you know, ingest their culture and consume their resources. Um, so it was important just from a, 
not to make any statements or, or, or preach any message. But yeah, it was never preachy. But just, so. just to have it there as, as patterns of behaviour that we can relate to, for good or ill. I think it's a function of the story, actually, which right. is wonderful, because the truth is that whole notion of the, the consumerism, the rampant like need mm. to keep consuming, and um, this is what happens in this world of, of tractionism, right. which is the mode of living that these people, which has come into being. Mm. And they literally, these giant cities to survive, mm. have to hunt down these smaller cities for their resources. But at the same time, they're stripping the world of, of, of resources, they're stripping the earth of resources. It's, it, it is, it, I mean, the one thing it would be akin to is like with, with uh, climate, climate yeah. change right. now, and it's not about, the film isn't about climate change, but it is about you have that feeling of, let, why don't we just stop actually and look after the planet for, for, for a minute? Just stop what we're all doing and actually just heal heal the planet. And so that, yeah. that, that I think, is one common thing that's in the books. Yeah, books, it's, you've got that, you know, you know the, the, and then the whole notion of, of what happens when these, the upheaval that happens to the, the people who are on that little city, that, that the bigger city mm. just consumed, suddenly they're, they're refugees in a whole new world. Those sort of things just happen naturally as part of the storytelling. We never take on stories that are like issues based. Well, well it's, sure. hard, it's hard to because you've got a lag time because yeah, we, we, we're, right. we're sitting there writing a script and it's going to be three years before anyone sees the film. And so right. whatever, we're, whatever world we're yeah. in now might be very, very different. There's one, the one, the, mo the, most, the most topical thing is about six weeks ago, we were in our very end of our sound mixing, you know, where, yeah. where we're putting all the, the sound together. And it was right when um, Trump was um, was separating um, families, you know, you know, on 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 the border, kids were being right. pulled away from parents, and so we, we had a, a line that you can hear on the loud, uh, you know, on the speak on the speaker system um, as the um, as the as the salt hook people are coming into are being absorbed and saying that, that uh, children might be separated from parents, parents for, for right. a brief period of time. And that sure. was actually, that, that was as political as we got, which was, was yeah. we, we were disgusted by what was in the news every day yeah. as we were doing the sound mix. That's what we were seeing. So we put that line in just as a, um, well, well it's also, I, it just felt, you know. It, it, it felt true to the story, true, too, because you, know, you see like, these parents holding these kids. Mm, they hold, they're standing in line. They, mm, they've only got the belongings that they were allowed to bring mm, with them. Mm, you know, it's pretty... Mm, it, and and one of our main characters is part of that intake of people, but mm. she's one of the characters who's determined that she's not going to be like. Well, that. she's there to kill some or some, yeah. somebody, which she's is which is Donald Trump's her. worst nightmare, isn't it? Really. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nicely self-contained story in that you don't feel as if you need another nine films following it. However, I know it's based on a series of books. So, would you be at the helm? Would you want to keep telling stories in this world? That'll be up to whether you know this film's successful and in, in a perfect world. Yeah, in a perfect. I'd love to continue the journey, and uh, Tom and Hester's story is is, is so rich and, and wonderful, and there's a lot of characters that we you know we th we, we we think are dead that come back, right. um, and and you know Philip's story just gets bigger and more beautiful, and it'd be great to see that you know continue that journey on screen. Hey, watch out! Valentine, this is for my mother. <laughs> Ask him why he murdered my mother. I'm sorry you had to hit her. As to sure, she won't stop until I'm dead. Unless you kill her first. I want them found! I've been looking for you for a long time. Your mother, she said she had found something dangerous. She was afraid of Valentine, of what he might do. The man who controls this, controls the world. She said that you could stop him. You sure you want to do this? Once we go in, there's no going back. I have to.